Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Targum Tea, a podcast which focuses on pop culture reviews and social media. I'm Eli Horowitz, and I am joined today by our IB editor, Rania Rizvi, and Preeti Sharma, who has been on the Targum Tea podcast as a host in the past. And we are going to be discussing today the impact that TikTok has had both on the music industry, on current trends, and on us as college students um, in general. So uh, I want to start with an article that was written in the Daily Targum on January 27th, and um, it was titled, Could TikTok Be the Best Place to Discover New Music? So I kind of want to start here as just like a general overview of TikTok. Um, and obviously, for people who don't know TikTok, uh, I'm guessing you live in a cave or something because TikTok is like the biggest thing in the world right now. <laughs> Um, but for people who don't know, uh, it's a place where you can discover uh, videos that are created by all kinds of people. Um, if you've seen anything like dance trends or uh, music trends over the past couple of years, a lot of them have come from TikTok. So I want to start uh, just by asking a question to uh, both of you guys. So with music in general, uh, when you're discovering uh, new music and new trends and stuff like that, are you getting it from TikTok or, uh, you know, are you getting it from social media or different places or where, where are you guys mostly getting like the new music and new trends from? So I would say that I heavily use social media. Like I'm not exactly a music buff. I'm super basic. So like whatever's trending is usually like what I tend to gravitate towards. And I think TikTok does a really good job at curating what is going to be trending. I feel like it almost has an inverse effect where TikTok kind of determines what's going to be trending and then Spotify and all the other streaming platforms kind of follow suit. So for example, like Doja Cat, Megan Thee Stallion, I like knew of them because of Instagram, but I really became, I guess, a stand through TikTok because their audios would blow up. Oh yeah, yeah, same, same here. So here's the thing, like I don't have a, I, I don't have a, a TikTok, but I mean, that's the, that's, that's, that's the same thing that I, that I, that I hear like all the time, but you know, any new music that's coming up on, on Spotify, on Apple music, it all starts on TikTok and basically any new music that I've been hearing now in like the past one, one year, I think maybe it's all kind of come back from TikTok. No, yeah, that's great facts because you'll like listen to, you'll watch a TikTok, right? And you hear the audio in the back and you're like, yo, that's bumping. Like, where is that from? So then I like go on Google and I'm like, you know, TikTok audio, like type down the four words that I remember from it. And then I'll find that artist. So like Streets by Doja Cat has been trending. It's like a yeah. sexy audio. And I was just like, okay, like, where can I find this? And now I stream Doja Cat because I found her audio through these trending videos. So it definitely like, for sure. As much as I hate to admit that I'm this basic, like I really am. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think that brings up a great point because uh, there's been so many, like so much music over the past couple of years that has like gotten like super, super popular from TikTok. And I mean, we could name off a whole list like Old Town Road, like that got popular from TikTok. I, yeah. I think you're correct. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where like the whole thing with Lil Nas, like started and then on the um, car. oh my gosh I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know this <laughs> it, it's so weird it's like I had to go through like some of the music that I've heard and it's just to me it's sometimes just background music uh or when I'm with friends like sometimes like they'll have music on I'm like I know that from somewhere and like they'll say oh this is my TikTok playlist I'm like what so there's like TikTok playlists <laughs> that exist and it's like yeah. you can trace it's like do you guys know um it's like the baby has had like hits and stuff like that, and uh, uh, from Bulls TikTok on TikTok and Roxanne. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Roxanne blew up from TikTok. Yes, um, yes, Roxanne's such yeah. a banger. Like, I think okay, honestly, if you made me listen to Roxanne like on the radio, I'd be like, oh, what the hell is that? But because I heard it on TikTok, I was like, wait, this is a groove. Like, it's also interesting how TikTok shapes what you like because maybe you wouldn't have liked it if you didn't hear it without if you didn't see it without the video or you didn't see like Addison Ray dancing along to it it kind of like subliminally shapes your taste in some sort of way I feel yeah that's a that's like a really cool cool thing I, and um and I think also just like uh just like add add on um here's the thing like if you saw like I think one of like the biggest stars on on TikTok, like dancing to like this song, and then like it's it's going to 
to be like, oh, she likes it. And so I'm going to like it too. Like it's like that sort of thought train going on. I think. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's a great point, Preeti. And I, I, I think that's sort of a testament to what, um, how content creators are using TikTok right now. Um, and I, I think that's a good uh, segue into kind of this idea of, you know, a lot of musicians right now are using TikTok to pr- promote their brands. Obviously, we're living in a time of COVID. So there's not like concerts and stuff going on. So obviously, like musicians and uh, like bands and stuff like that, they can't like make their money from live shows and stuff right now. So yeah. what they've had to do is start putting stuff out on social media, uh, focusing on TikTok specifically right now, because that's obviously like the big trend, right? So what are you guys thoughts on like who you hear music from specifically on TikTok um, and kind of how that influences like what you specifically are listening to right now? Well, I feel like a lot of the music that trends is, well, I guess I have to preface this with like, I think rap and hip hop has obviously had its come up. Like that's been, that's been happening since like the late nineties, early two thousands. But I feel like, especially for women in rap and hip hop, like I feel like they're really getting their moment now. So I've actually discovered like other female rap artists in particular because of TikTok. Like obviously everybody knows like Yay, Drake and whatnot. You know, everybody knows like the classics, but like mm-hmm. Megan Thee Stallion, like Doja Cat, Kalani, Normani, like all of these like smaller names or like women in rap who didn't have as much attention before or in r and I don't want to be like exclusive because they're not all just solely rap. But um, I think they're really getting a spotlight that's unprecedented, especially for women in rap. And I think now I actually can say that like before my rap playlist would be like mostly men, but I think now it's like slowly equating. Like I like half of my stuff is like Meg Thee Stallion or Doja or whoever else. Yo, yeah, same here. Like um, so many people have, have blown up in the past year just because of putting their songs out onto, onto TikTok. And I think like, that's one of the biggest things. Like I've been listening to a bunch of, I, I will think I'm not now, but like me, like last year, I listened to Say So so many times <laughs> because of TikTok. Like that was like my number one song on Spotify in like the end of 2020. So like, I think it, 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 it just goes to show like the, like all the songs that are coming up onto, onto, onto TikTok onto TikTok they've like blown up into such a huge scale that like number one on billboard that's something that like it just never like crossed my mind like that could ever happen you know from a small app to like number one like what yeah it's interesting to see how like TikTok also influences like the radio I don't really listen to the radio anymore but like the few times that I have it's like all the top playing songs are like like on whatever's TikTok. on TikTok, like mm-hmm. Roxanne. Why am I hearing Roxanne on the radio? You know, like it's so crazy how they basically have like kind of a monopoly on the music industry. Like not in terms of like how what's gonna trend. Like they really have huge reins on that, and it's kind of insane to see because it's usually always been the other way around. Like mm-hmm. big business decided, or like the radio decided what's gonna be trending, but now it's the other way around. Like the power is in the hands of the consumer these days. That's such a great point because, so I grew up in a time when like, I would listen to the radio in my mom and dad's car and like whatever came on, on like 92.3, like that would be like, that like like, 92.3. And I think it was, uh, I think it was 100.3. Those were like the two. 103.5 KTU. Did you listen to that? (laughs) I think that, yeah, I I can't remember (laughs) specifically, but it's like, those would be the two stations where like you would get like the poppy hits that would come on and not just pop I mean like R&B like rock it it kind of depended on what was popular at the time Mm -hmm. but it's so interesting because like in the past it's been radio like you've said but now it's really like what are you discovering on social media what are you discovering on TikTok and then how does that affect uh, us as college students too because we're kind of like in that demographic that TikTok is really trying to target like I would say like us and like teenagers, um, especially right now, um, like those are the people that content creators and musicians are kind of trying to target. So like, what what is it do you think about TikTok in general that like drives that like, when people hear a song, they're like, oh my God, that's stuck in my head. Like, 
I think you mentioned like it could be part of like because it's uh, you see a video alongside that music and then it's like yeah. it pops up everywhere and then you're like I like I like that song. Yeah. It's the freaking algorithm. Oh my god, the algorithm is like it controls everything these days. Like the thing is, is that even if you don't particularly like an audio, if you keep getting exposure to it because it's trending, it almost mm -hmm. subliminally makes you like the audio. So like there was this audio that like it, it really pisses my sister off. Like there was like this um trend of calling like mispronouncing like Leonardo da Vinci's name, <laughs> like to say like da Vinci, like it, it became an audio and it would piss my sister off. Like she'd be like, this is so annoying. This is dumb. I cannot believe this is trending. But guess what she would say to me every other hour? Da Vinci? Like it just sticks in your brain. And like, you can't help but like, want to repeat it. Like they have really unlocked psychology. I don't know mm -hmm. what they got going on in their labs or whatnot, but they really know how to make something stick. And even if you don't necessarily like it, you're going to remember it. And then you're going to talk about it. And then you're going to share it. And then you're going to share it to people who maybe have a different taste than you and actually like it. So either way, like TikTok always wins. They don't have to win you over. They just need you to talk about it. Yeah, same actually. And here's the the thing. It it it's only like a thirty second clip. So and I think like if you play that thirty seconds of like the hook again and again and again, people are gonna be like hooked on. So like yeah, like just going back to like what you were saying, like if like you're seeing it anywhere, you know, and it's only and it's that small um clip, and I think it just gets stuck in your head and can't let it go. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, so there, there's a quote in the article and, uh, and the quote is, um, at the end of the day, TikTok songs and trends are short lived with multiple songs going viral each month and then dying down once again, there's a much larger conversation to be had on TikTok. Um, if the TikTok trends and popular music are even an indicator of good music, or if the songs that go viral are just catchy enough to be used uh, by a larger audience. So that's kind of an interesting point that she makes because um, whether you like the music or not, I guess sort of depends on what genre you like. And, and, and she also kind of mentions, it's kind of like the catchiness um, of like the songs itself. Like, does that make it good music or bad music? Like what, what are your guys thoughts on that? Cause I don't, I, I can't really say I have like too much of an, uh, an opinion on that because my musical musical tastes are just like, like kind of wild like I like everything so it's it's kind of well, hard for me in a country Eli is that what I'm hearing I listen okay the country <laughs> is the one thing that I will not really listen to that much unless unless it's chicken fried by Zach Brown band in which case <laughs> I love uh but I, I don't know I like like EDM rock like uh like rap RMB, like I, I like a whole plethora of like music and stuff that's why like for me it's like it doesn't affect my taste too much because like I'll hear a poppy hit and I'll be like oh that's a good song you know, but other people, I don't know. I mean, what is, what is good and bad? You know, like, I think we really ponder this question because for the first time, like big business isn't telling us what is good and bad. And we're not used to that. We're not used to having like this much power over trends or like what is popular in the market. So good and bad, I don't really feel like is relative because it's good if you like it. It's always going to be subjective, you know, like it really depends on the time and the era and like, well, we're in a time of like pop music and rap music and stuff like that. So I think a majority of people would agree that like the trending pop and rap songs are good. It really, it's a really like subjective idea. But like what I do think is interesting though, is that I think we used, the music industry used to make icons, like people who could stand against the test of time. But now we just make celebrities, like people who are just popular for like X amount of time and then they'll fade away. So mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting idea. Like artists these days, like even if they are considered good, they don't have the same permanence. Honestly, do you think like just, just going off of that, just going off of that, that just going off of that point, do you think that that TikTok is gonna like die out? Cause I mean, like you, you said like, they don't have that same sort of longing. They, 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 they don't have that same sort of like long standing power, you know, like to go on for years. So do you think that like, just like these, these music trends are gonna like die out like after like the, after two weeks or so um, and like a new song is gonna come up. Do you think TikTok's gonna die out too? 
trends come and go like that's always been the nature of things I feel but like in terms of TikTok dying absolutely not everybody's a sucker for 15 minutes of fame that's why it works because everybody wants to be famous even a little bit they want to have like clout they want to have like 10 seconds in the spotlight because before that was a really exclusive experience like you had to be a significant person within an industry to experience that but now you don't you can be a total rando and have like doja cat level clout for a day or like whatever it may be, you can have millions of likes too. You don't need to be a celebrity. So I don't, so trends will die for sure. Like two weeks from now, we're going to like something else. But mm -hmm. in terms of TikTok, the app, no, no, because it's playing on probably one of the most instinctual, like psychological needs of people, which is like to want to be recognized and noticed. Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing, like why not out? You know what I mean? Uh, and why got out people like Sean Mendes, like, and it died like three or four years ago. Not sure exactly when. <laughs> to me, this is such an interesting question because uh, we kind of talk about trends and we always talk about it in relation to like social media because social media, obviously, like it dictates trends now. So, yeah, so Vine was like the precursor to, uh, to TikTok in a lot of ways. But if you kind of talk about like the biggest like differences between Vine and TikTok, it's that content creators like musicians are really, really using the platform of TikTok to take off their music in like really huge directions. And I don't know if that happened with Vine too much. I can't really remember. I, 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 I think Vine really long enough for that to happen. Like Vine yeah. was designed to be six seconds in six seconds. Like you can make somebody laugh, but you can't make them like become obsessed with you. But like if with you're doing song, like yeah. minute long videos repeatedly every single day, three times a day, like that's enough content for somebody to really like you know get invested it's like condensed youtube you know like people like are die hard for youtubers so this is kind of like a, a sort of skimmed out version of that also i feel like nobody really knew what vine was when it was made you know like it was just kind of like a meme house but now i think tiktok is very business oriented like they're determined to make this succeed so they're constantly changing the algorithm so that i don't think it has that problem because Vine was um, basically rebooted by the same company, if I'm not mistaken, or something mm -hmm. like that. It got purchased. So they already know like what the weak spots of Vine was. So I think mm -hmm. TikTok, social media is always going to be changing. Like at some, like, you know, we see Facebook's like kind of dying. So it's acquiring like other companies now, like Facebook, the platform doesn't resonate with us anymore. Right. Like we're more into like Instagram, Snap and TikTok. But um, in terms of like, its ability to influence like I don't think that's gonna die out like what whatever comes after TikTok it's gonna be pretty similar in design you know because that's 100%. how they all work yeah a hundred percent yeah I mean the next evolution of TikTok I still think is going to be like TikTok or at least it's going to be based around the business model of TikTok because like you said like TikTok is like a business now so yeah, like people use it for content promotion and everything like that. So I don't know why off of this, you know, like the creator yeah. one, like you can't pull the plug on TikTok because people will literally lose their incomes. Like, I don't know exactly. if people relied on Vine the exact same way. I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. But, and I, I think that also goes into, again, because we're college students and we're talking about this, like we're affected in like a lot of different ways by TikTok, not just like our, from our musical taste, but just in so many ways that trends are set and uh, how we also influence those trends, you know, uh, as a result of that. But I also want to talk about this idea of the algorithm because we've brought it up a couple times and that's a big part of TikTok, obviously, because they have the for you page. And so it'll uh, kind of parse out um, which videos you're going to watch uh, based on like the length that you uh, watch the videos and then like what you tend to listen to and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that creates are like, this idea of filter bubbles and people for people who don't know filter bubbles I mean that's something that comes up in uh like on Facebook and Instagram all the time which is that idea of uh you're seeing specific things but because you're seeing specific things you're also not seeing a lot of different things right. um, and, and not just politically like you know anything so I want to ask you guys about that is that something that is concerning to you and potentially like a negative effect of TikTok that you're only seeing specific things and then not seeing, you know, others. Oh, absolutely. Like 
you know, when you think of like the dumb like food trends or whatnot, like that problem doesn't seem so dangerous, right? Because like those things are benign. It's like, how could it be a problem that like I'm seeing more of what I like? But if you think about it from like a political point of view, that's where it starts to become problematic because we already live in a country like the United States specifically, that's very politically polarized where sides refuse to see one another. And then you have an app that kind of profits off of that. They're like, oh, you don't want to see something good. Don't worry about it. You'll never, ever have to see it ever again. And like, you know, we already see people like refusing to watch certain news channels or like, like read certain newspapers, you know, but at some point you would still hear the other side. But for young, impressionable teenagers who don't really understand the political system, don't really know what polarization means, where are their opinions going to come from? They're going to come from TikTok because they don't have an understanding of like that grander scope of things, right? So that's why it's dangerous. You know, if you're a well-informed citizen or whatnot, which is honestly not most of us, I'm not even gonna qualify myself in that because everybody has their biases. You know, maybe you can resist this a little bit more, but for the young kids who are on there, who don't have set political opinions, who don't, you know, understand a party system or whatnot because like you know keep in mind like there's a lot of children on this app you know teenagers and adults aren't the ones who run this it's the children you know the charlie d'amelio stands like the 13 year olds who are on this and they are just going to soak up whatever it is that their creators promote so charlie d'amelio whether or not she supports black lives matter it doesn't matter she has it in her bio so i'm gonna put it in my bio and that's gonna make maybe this this kid like more left-leaning in the future but for some other kid who didn't get to see charlie d'amelio on their for you page and they might see somebody else that might change what they believe in and that's scary because their opinions aren't coming from an understanding of what they're believing in. They're just going with whatever seems appealing to them. Like, how is it sold best to me? That's what I'm gonna follow. And that's freaking scary because as we know, like big business never really, they don't really care about your best interest. They just want to sell. So yeah, no, it's freaky. I don't like it. And I also noticed that like, it does affect me and my friends. Cause like we'll shape our points of views depending on what we hear the most on TikTok. So I'm on like, left-leaning TikTok. So I have a lot of progressives on my page, but I, and then there'll be a couple like diehard Trump fans in the comments who are like, how did this end up on my page? Like, why am I seeing this? And conversely, I'll like get a military talk. And then there's a bunch of progressives in the bottom who are like, why is this on my page? Like, I didn't sign up for this content. Like it really creates a deep abhorrence for anything that isn't what you want to see, which is freaky because that's not the real world. That's a really good point. I'm glad that 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 I'm not on TikTok anymore. This is just like you and Eli are people. You haven't right been now. like indoctrinated. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't have to suffer through like that bubble thing, but yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's also something. So when we talk about things like the dark web, like for example, like that already like kind of scares me because like. The dark web like, is so trippy. It's so, oh, it's so scary. There, all right. So I, I've had like projects in the past where I've had to uh, like research something related to like the Holocaust, for example. And like, if you start going down the rabbit hole of like research and stuff like that, like you will find stuff from like alt right, you know, like sites um, that are are specifically trying to target, you know, people. When you click on that second and third and you know Google pages and stuff like that. Um, you're not going to see that on the first Google page, but trust me, you can find it on TikTok. It's the exact same thing. Like my friends have told me that like, they'll see like these really, really like scary videos. And if they watch it for more than like a couple seconds, like TikTok will see that. And then they'll say, okay, we're going to show you more of that type of video. So like you said, like you might see more videos of, uh, I don't know, like alt-right, you know, neo-Nazi type, you know, stuff. And that to me is scary because I'm thinking about like these 12 and 13 year olds that are using TikTok. And then once they see more of that, like, how do they, how are they affected by that? Like, because I I just don't think like they can look at that and know like, oh, that's bad. Like, I I, I just think they don't know anything. Exactly. Yeah. That's the main point of this, that they're too young to actually have no one like, okay, this is what, this is what I think is right. This is like, and, and then this is what I think is not right. And they're just going to like follow like what they see the most. So I think that's the biggest downside to all of these apps that 
you know, the amount of power that it has is insane. Exactly. As a last point, um, and last question for you guys, uh, overall, like, what do you think, like, the impact right now is going to be, uh, you know, of, of this generation, of the generations, you know, after us and everything of TikTok? Like, what do you think is going to happen because of TikTok? Because I've heard of, like, ridiculous situations where people are like, TikTok's the end of the world. Like, it's, it's going to lead to, like, the apocalypse or whatever. And then some what? people are like, no, like, TikTok's like the way <laughs> of the future. And it's like, I would it's, like to think we're a little bit more resilient than that. I, I hope so. <laughs> I, 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 I hope not. I hope that's not the apocalypse. <laughs> so like, here's the thing. Like, um, I, I feel like this is always going to be like a part of, you know, like us, like from now on, like anything like, anything like, like anything like TikTok or like anything like like that that's just going to be like a part of like us and I think we're, we're like we're gonna have to like live with that but I think maybe like 35 years like down the line um <laughs> we're gonna find out that okay there's something better than this and so I think it's gonna get worse and worse and worse but um it's not gonna go into like in you know a huge like big deal but I think it's never gonna stop and yeah yeah, I mean, I don't want to be like 100% pessimistic about TikTok because it does have like power to do good. Like there are people who have made their whole businesses off of TikTok. You know, there are young entrepreneurs, there are young creators who are like spreading genuinely positive messages through this app. I think all social media has good and bad parts to it. You know, TikTok is no different in that sense. But I think what we will see is um, a lot more sensationalism, just like thing you know cancel culture which is like a whole separate topic like it's already out of control and I just feel like with the rate we're going at some point we're going to reach a society where things need to be censored or things might be controlled or we'll just reach a point of political polarization where like we literally have to scrap the system in place I don't think TikTok itself is necessarily the revolution but I think that it's bringing forth issues in our society to the forefront, like right in front of our faces. And I think that within itself is gonna cause changes. I, I, I don't think any of us can accurately predict what's gonna happen. I don't know what they're gonna do with the algorithm. It honestly depends. Cause the thing about technology is that it constantly changes, right? So you never know like what update they're gonna come out with that potentially does something crazy. Like who knows, man, like who knows who, like what type of technology they have. They might start brain scanning us. Like, I don't know, you know. Oh but gosh, I, that's some black mirror shit right there. Right? <laughs> black mirror is real life, but that's a separate story. But um, what I can promise you is that TikTok is going to be a platform to be influential. And whether that's a good or bad thing, only time will tell. Because if it falls into the hands of the wrong person who's really charismatic, that can be very troublesome. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, and I like this discussion, uh, how we we went from uh, uh, could TikTok be the best place to discover new music to like literal to, doom to, and existential, <laughs> as yeah. it should be. That's how Targum T should roll. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> and that's all for today. Join us next time on Targum T for more reviews and make sure to follow the Daily Targum on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more content. <laughs>